Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Antibiotics save lives. There's no doubt about it. Antibiotics are drugs used to treat infections. But there are some issues with antibiotics. There are some uh, side effects and toxicities that occur. Many of them largely do to reducing the number of healthy bacteria in your intestines. Hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the chief scientific officer over here at Invet Health. And welcome to my podcast. This episode is called Take Probiotics When On Antibiotics. So, you have trillions of bacteria living with you. They vastly outnumber your own human cells. And there are viruses living with you. There are yeast bacteria living with you, and a slew, a whole zoo full of other bacteria. Some of them are incredibly healthy, and some of them are incredibly dangerous. However, when you have a balance, and there's enough of the healthy bacteria, and if there's certain strains involved, certain species and strains, they rule the roost, and they help prevent the bad bacteria from acting out. When you take... um, many antibiotics, they have a what's called a broad spectrum of activity. They kill many bacteria. So hopefully they'll kill the infection that they're intended to kill. That doesn't always happen. However, they frequently kill off your good bacteria. And what's left over can be really tough, dangerous bacteria, especially uh, one called Clostridium difficile. And It's a a very common cause of diarrhea in people who've used antibiotics. But it can also cause a severe form of um, colitis, severe inflammation of the lining of the colon, that in some people will be terminal. In any event, study after study shows that when you use a high quality of probiotic, because not all of the species and strains are equal with a probiotic, when you use certain species and strains in a probiotic that helps prevent this problem with Clostridium difficile, which is a very common problem, by the way. Clostridium difficile could cause such severe inflammation in the intestines, in the colon specifically, that they actually have to remove part of the damaged colon. They have to resection the colon, cut out the part that's damaged, and basically attach the other two ends together to let them heal again. Or it can wind up, like I said, terminal. So when um, an antibiotic kills off all your friendly bacteria and there's just some really severe nasty strains left over, that's a situation called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means you've shifted and damaged the balance of bacteria in your intestines. This is likely happening throughout your body, but, but it's of note in the intestines. Now, what happens a lot of the leftover bacteria release toxins that inflame the intestines and lead to a condition called leaky gut syndrome. The lining of your intestines is supposed to be a a very good barrier that things that are in the intestines that don't belong in the body in the bloodstream cannot leave the intestines and get into the bloodstream. However, when there's certain strains of bacteria that release uh, toxins, that inflamed lining of the, back of the intestines, that lining is very thin. And it becomes leaky, and now things that shouldn't leave the intestines are exiting the intestines and getting into the bloodstream, and they're dangerous. And this kind of leakage, this leaky gut syndrome, has been connected to certain autoimmune diseases, more than likely rheumatoid arthritis, but possibly one of the causes of systemic lupus erythematosus. It's been connected to cancers. It's been connected to many ill effects, many conditions. So there are a number of things that heal the intestines, but healthy bacteria and a good diet alone can heal your intestines. So I always tell people cater to your good bacteria in three ways. One, 
a good diet. Healthy bacteria live on the ingredients in many fruits and vegetables and foods. And if you give sufficient supply of these foods, like whole grains, whole grains, uh, cocoa, even, believe it or not, beans and soy foods, which are legumes, any legume, uh, there's ingredients in these that feed these bacteria. Uh, typically, any good source of fiber. So, um, green leafy vegetables have ingredients that nourish them. Um, uh, nuts and seeds, um, salads and vegetables across the board. So, that's one of the reasons why a good diet is so wholesome and so beneficial for your health. That It's a source of nourishment for the good bacteria. Plus, the good bacteria can change things in the food... And these things then go on to help protect you from viruses, certain cancers, heart disease, mental deterioration, etc. Uh, and also they liberate things in a food that are very important, like things they'll liberate are good for controlling your appetite, etc. So eating good food supplies things that good bacteria live on. That's one way to encourage the growth of good bacteria across the board. A second way and kind of a step up is having fermented foods like kefir, which is a fermented dairy or real yogurt. I'm not ta- I'm talking about real lumpy yogurt, not those yogurts that taste like dessert that are really smooth. Uh, and a, a whole slew of different um, Korean and Japanese foods like uh, tempeh and miso and natto. They give you bacteria. And then the next step up and probably the, the most powerful step you can take is if you choose certain probiotic strains. That really can make your, your, your digestive health amazingly improved. Amazingly improved. So when you take an antibiotic, it throws off the balance of your bacteria very quickly, within a day or two. Now, a lot of things can throw off the balance of your bacteria. It's turning out that aging can change the complement of bacteria in your gut leading to a more unsavory sort. Um, Diabetes, pre-diabetes, obesity, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, many prescription drugs, not just antibiotics, but many prescription drugs affect the balance of the bacteria in your intestines. And even using a lot of cleaning fluids that you clean your house with, like all those sprays, because when you inhale them, they wind up in your digestive tract and they can kill your good bacteria. But it's especially important when you take an antibiotic. So you really need to take a good probiotic when you take an antibiotic. So here's a study from May 9th, 2012. It's from JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. It's by Rand Corp. It's a meta-analysis, 63 human clinical trials with over 11,000 participants. Approximately 30% of the individuals on an antibiotic in general develop diarrhea, okay? In general, 30% of people on an antibiotic develop diarrhea. And it's due to a loss of healthy bacteria. It's called dysbiosis. Then uh, people uh, will prematurely often discontinue using the antibiotic, which is bad because then the bacteria can become resistant to future use of the same antibiotic. And you didn't get totally rid of the uh, infection, so it could come back with a vengeance. So the Rand Corporation Publishing and JAMA Journal of the American Medical Association looked at 63 human clinical trials, over 11,000 participants. The use of a probiotic is associated with a 42% lower risk of developing diarrhea when taking an antibiotic. So there's a clear benefit there. Just one thing, you have to take the probiotic separate from the antibiotic, like at least several hours away, to give the probiotic bacteria a chance to get set and start to colonize. So this is especially important to prevent a super infection with with the Clostridia difficile, because that's the most the most commonly used uh, probiotics in these studies were lactobacilli, but also bifidobacterium. They were often mixed together with them, and they really help prevent the uh, antibiotic related diarrhea. So combining lactobacilli with bifidobacterium uh, uh, help prevent diarrhea associated with antibiotic use. So there's a similar review. Now, there's been a lot of reviews after this, but they're all the same. A review after review of many, many human clinical trials, you take a probiotic, the correct strains with an antibiotic, and you help prevent a lot of the uh, issues that occur from using an antibiotic. So there was a similar review in June 2013. 
It was in the journal Open Medicine. It was St. Michael's Hospital at the University of Toronto. And they looked at 16 human clinical trials, 3,403 patients, giving a probiotic significantly reduced antibiotic-related diarrhea in hospital patients. And also, it prevented C. difficile infections in hospital patients. That's really important. If you go to a hospital and you pick up an infection, it's called a nosocomial infection. That means you've been in the hospital several days. You picked up a bacterium in the hospital. Water sources of bacteria in the hospital, the linens, the privacy curtain, the doctor's tie, um, even a doctor's cell phone. That can transfer bacteria from one person to another. The problem is when you pick up these bacteria in a hospital, they've been living for hundreds if not thousands of generations in a hospital. They're resistant to all the antibiotics. They have to use very powerful, very dangerous antibiotics in situations like that uh, because they're the only things that work in some of these hospital-acquired infections like vancomycin and gentamicin. So what's the problem with that? Well, uh, first of all, they could be very toxic to your kidneys, especially vancomycin, but also they can ma literally make you go deaf. They literally destroy your hearing. So you don't want to get to a situation where you have to use those antibiotics. So, And when is the best time to start a probiotic? Uh, if you start a probiotic now, within a week or two, your immune system is better at fighting off infections. And within three weeks, your digestive tract has pretty much calmed down because the probiotics bacteria get in there and start wrestling with the bad bacteria and yeast, etc., and get them under control. And that could take about three weeks. So I would try to plan taking a probiotic a month before I went for any, um, any situation in a hospital. So here's the Cochrane Review, May 2013. Uh, Cochrane is a very prestigious review review organization. They review uh, research on diets, on nutritional supplements and herbs, on on laser therapies, on surger, surger, surgical procedures. They review uh, the research on drugs, and they tell you they come to conclusions about th these things. So anything related to health, they'll review the research on. And they'll tell you, well, there's enough research or there's not enough research or it's good research or it's bad research or we feel it's dangerous or we feel it's safe. So they looked at 23 clinical trials. This is the Cochrane Review. 23 clinical trials that included 4,213 adults and children. Um, if you took a probiotic when you're on an antibiotic, it reduced your risk of developing diarrhea by 64%. Plus, the probiotics prevented an overgrowth of C. difficile. Not only can C. difficile cause diarrhea, it can also cause a very serious type of colitis. Just a couple of tips on probiotics. You want to get a probiotic with at least two different bacteria, and you want at least a billion of each. And it'd be good if there was a little food for the, bac for the bacteria in there. Uh, my friend, Dr. Alan Pressman, an old buddy of mine, used to tell me, hey, you wouldn't buy goldfish without goldfish food. Why would you buy bacteria without bacterial food? So they call it a prebiotic. It's usually from chicory root. It might be called chicory. It might be called FOS or fructooligosaccharides. But that's food in there for the bacteria. That makes them more successful at culturing and growing in number and leading to better health. I'm going to tell you something. I couldn't find a study, but I read a study of over 500 patients in hospitals in China. I read this study about three years ago. It was over 500 patients in hospitals in China, and they were in there for surgical procedures. And if they gave them a probiotic, it strongly prevented an overgrowth of, of C. difficile, a very dangerous bacteria. So here's the University of Seattle. Uh, Dr. Lynn McFarland. She's the keynote uh, speaker at Probiota Asia. That's a conference that's uh, devoted to research on bacteria, especially probiotic supplements. And she said that a multi-strain probiotic with lactobacilli helps prevent diarrhea caused by H. pylori when you're being treated with an antibiotic. Now, she's a very famous immunologist. So in a British medical journal, Imperial College London, once again, they did a study, probiotics prevent diarrhea in the elderly treated with antibiotics. But that was a single study. That was not a review of other studies. So let's go to the journal Gut. 
That's a, that's a journal of the British Medical Journals. That's one of their journals. Gut, it was January 2021. So it's uh, now. <laughs> We're in February. Uh, stool samples of patients admitted to a hospital with COVID-19 shows dysbiosis. Now, dysbiosis means you're lacking the good bacteria. You have a lot of bad bacteria. Your, 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 your uh, balance of bacteria is really thrown off. So they found... Uh, in the journal gut, that people that were admitted to the hospital when they took stool samples, the one uh, for COVID-19, I mean, their COVID-19 was bad enough that, that they were admitted to hospitals, the stool samples showed they were lacking good bacteria. And lacking good bacteria was related to worsening infection and an increase in cytokine release. Now, that's a really important finding. And that's not the only study showing this. Cytokines are chemical messengers that can, some of them stop inflammation, some of them create inflammation. And COVID-19, when it wages a war in your lungs, which is the most common battle in COVID-19 patients, it's the most common side of a battle, the lungs. When it wages a war, there's a massive release of pro-inflammatory cytokines that inflame the lungs and it leads to acute respiratory distress syndrome where the lungs lining is flooding with fluid and you can't breathe. So they found a clear connection between lacking good bacteria, being admitted to the hospital with COVID-19 and worsening of the infection and leading to these cytokine problems. I mean, some of these people have such severe inflammation that even once they're cleared of the infection, they're still suffering six months later. They still have severe diarrhea. Or they still don't have their sense of smell back. They might have problems with their memory or their brain. They might have lung problems and breathing problems or heart problems. Some of them are driven into diabetes. So there's amaz amazingly bad things happening here. So there's evidence that a an imbalance in your intestinal bacteria uh, leads to an inflammatory state when you get COVID-19 that can make the infection worse. And that seems to be the connection to those uh, people, they're called long haulers, where the, effect, the infection's gone, but they still have a lot of problems that were caused by the infection. So uh, it's important stuff they're finding out. Um, and now for something a little bit different. It's the journal Expert Review of Anti-Infective Therapy. It's 90 younger women who suffer with repeat urinary tract infections. They gave them a combination of two strains of bacteria and cranberry, plus some vitamin A. So they gave them lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus plantarum, cranberry, real cranberry, not, not the sweetened juice, but the real cranberry. And they gave them vitamin A or a placebo. So they got these capsules with the nutrients and the probiotic bacteria, or they got a placebo. Now, 20 to 30 percent of all women are prone to multiple urinary tract infections, so this is not uncommon. These women are all prone, 90 younger women, they're prone to repeat urinary tract infections. By the end of the study, the number of women with repeat urinary tract infections was significantly lower, four times less likely to suffer with a future urinary tract infection if they were on the probiotic bacteria with the cranberry, with the vitamin A versus placebo. So we know that probiotic bacteria in general help reduce the need for antibiotics in the first place. But the other message is if you're on an antibiotic, you really need to be on a good probiotic supplement. Now the rest of the, uh, they also found in the same study that the duration of an infection, if they did wind up with a urinary tract infection, it was a much shorter infection. It lasted for only five days versus 12 days for the women on placebo. And the need for antibiotics for severe urinary tract infections was decreased dramatically. Now this is a, a you might not have heard of this journal, the Expert Review of Anti-Infective Therapy anti-infective therapy, but it's a very important journal because resistance to antibiotics is a growing problem. Antibiotics are not working frequently now. Antibiotics for yeast infections, antibiotics for bacterial infections, and then they have to resort to more dangerous antibiotics, so it's not a good thing. So on one hand, uh, taking a probiotic with an antibiotic several hours apart, minimally, uh, helps prevent a lot of the negative effects caused by an antibiotic. And on the other hand, taking a probiotic, one helps marshal your immune system, and two helps clear out a lot of bad bacteria, so it may reduce your risk of needing an antibiotic in the first place. 
So here's Imperial College London, it's European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And these are school kids. Over the winter, they gave them a probiotic with lactobacilli and bifidobacterium species and some vitamin C. And it cut the absence, the number of days absent from school for upper respiratory tract infections like the flu or a cold by 30%. It also cut down the use of antibiotics, the need for painkillers like Tylenol, cough medicine, and nasal sprays. So there's real value to probiotics in both helping treat an infection, helping prevent damage caused by antibiotics, and helping prevent an infection in the first place. So here's helping to treat an infection. <clears throat> All the other studies we just reviewed initially were for preventing damage caused by antibiotics. And then I, I reviewed a couple of studies where taking a probiotic may prevent an infection in the first place. But here's using a probiotic with an antibiotic helps the antibiotic work better. So in this report, they're looking at Lactobacillus parisii, and they said it can help prevent recurrence of symptoms and improve the quality of life in patients with prostatitis caused by bacteria. Now, that's not the most common cause of prostatitis. Prostatitis is inflammation of the prostate. So chronic bacterial prostatitis, not easy to treat, not very common, but it, it reduced an amount of, of antibiotic needed to treat the infection. Um, that's a good finding. And uh, that's in the World Journal of Urology, by the way. So taking a probiotic, even just one strain, helped clear up... Um, uh, chronic bacterial prostatitis faster <clears throat> by adding it to an antibiotic than using the antibiotic alone. And here's a, a similar kind of study. This is from uh, the journal Scientific Reports. It's the Naval Pohang Hospital in uh, South Korea. So these are uh, military, uh, young men in the military. But they had pneumonia. I guess being out at sea or being in a submarine or something, it's easy to catch pneumonia. So it's a large group of young men, 80 young men, with an average age of 20, who developed bacterial pneumonia. And they found out if they added probiotics to the antibiotic, they got better quicker. It was preventing diarrhea caused by the antibiotic, but they got over the infection faster. So there's an awful lot to be said about good bacteria versus bad bacteria. So he, just to go on in the vein of probiotics preventing an infection in the first place, this is the Journal of the American Geriatric Society. It's McMaster University up in Ontario, Canada. They do a great, a great deal of high quality research. It's a randomized, double blind, placebo controlled human clinical trial in 14 different nursing homes in Ontario and the patients were 65 years of age or older. It was 209 patients. And they gave them either a probiotic with lactobacillus rhamnosus and a couple of others. Oh, no, no, just lactobacillus rhamnosus. Or placebo every day for six months. And then they confirmed if they had a virus or not in their laboratory. And they found a number of nursing home residents on lactobacillus rhamnosus diagnosed with a virus um, was way down. It was way down over a six-month period. Um, so here's another one. This is a journal of dairy science, a very recent study, and they're looking at Lactobacillus plantarum. Now, I happen to use both of these strains in our probiotic HX and Invite Health. I used the Lactobacillus rhamnosus that was used in the patients in the nursing home, and this Lactobacillus, Lactobacillus plantarum. Uh, this is being used um, to see if it enhances immune system function and reduces inflammation in people with upper <clears throat> upper respiratory tract infections. Now an upper respiratory tract infection could be COVID-19, could be the flu, could be a cold, could be sinusitis, it could be tonsillitis. So they gave them over a 12-week period a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized human clinical trial in 109 adults. They gave them lactobacillus plantarum or they gave them placebo and they got rid of their uh, nasal symptoms much quicker if they did get sick, and the symptoms were a lot milder, but it also cut ba way back on the number of infections. They found out that, at, this was over the winter, it reduced upper respiratory tract infections in these patients by 68%. And they found if they did get sick, um, they didn't get as sick. They didn't get inflamed. It was controlling... Uh, 
um, pro-inflammatory cytokines that would like inflame the lungs and the sinuses, etc. And they also showed that their natural killer cells and their T cells were working better. That's really important. Natural killer cells are like ninja assassins. They're like the Navy SEALs of the immune system. They go hunt down and destroy cancer cells. They hunt down and destroy viruses. And they found in older people, other research, that natural killer cells, we have plenty of them, but they don't work well. And they found that if you give an older person a probiotic, certain strains, like Bifidobacterium animalis, subspecies lactis, or Lactobacillus plantarum, or Lactobacillus rhamnosus, that the uh, natural killer cells are much more viable. They're, they're much better equipped to kill a cancer cell or a virus. So here's a review just like that. They're looking at Bifidobacterium animalis, subspecies lactis, and they're looking at very elderly people. And like I said, the immune system is kind of broken down in elderly people. Four different human clinical trials. Within weeks, this strain of probiotics restored function of the natural killer cells dramatically. That's really important. So let me give you a, a timeline on what to expect with a probiotic. With, if you get the right strains, within a week or two, your natural killer cells are working better to demolish viruses and cancer cells. And also, your macrophages and your neutrophils are much more powerful. That's like the early part of the immune system. If that gets up and going very quickly, it could demolish a virus before it even gets going. So uh, I'm an older guy. As I said, age tends to kill off your good bacteria. Uh, I'm not quite a vegetarian. Like I'll have an egg once in a while. I'll have yogurt frequently. Um, I'll eat a piece of fish two or three times a week. So I'm, I'm a vo an ovo-lacto-vegetarian. Uh, but most of the food I eat is really high-quality vegetables and fresh fruits like blueberries and high-quality apples, etc. But I still, even though those foods are nourishment for good bacteria, I still take a probiotic every day because at my age, it matters. When you're over, like, 60, you need a probiotic. If you're using a lot of cleaning fluids and you're smelling it, that means it's getting into your digestive tract. It'll kill off your good bacteria. You need one, too. If you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or you're obese, if you drink a lot of alcohol or you smoke, if you're taking antibiotics here and there, you have to be on a probiotic. It's really important. Now, um, and one a day. If it's a good probiotic, one a day should be plenty. Thank you for tuning in to the InVet Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Or just visit InVetHealth.com. And our loading page, the front page on our website, just scan down about halfway and you'll see a big icon for the podcast. And if you click that, it'll take you to about, I don't know, 240, 250 podcasts. Uh, if you could leave me a review. And if you could subscribe, it would be very helpful. You can, if you want, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram uh, at Invite Health. And I hope to see you another time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you for listening. Jerry Hickey, Invite Health.